Hi all, this is Dr. J at 11, streaming to you live, coming to you live from Long Island, New York, where the weather is okay, but the sun shone bright on Wall Street today because the Dow had one of its best days of the year, up over 600 points. Dr. J called it, I didn't call 600 points, but I said we're going to take out the August, um, the, or what was it, 11, 8, September 8th highs by the end of the week, or maybe a little bit beyond that. And 600 points goes a long way towards that objective. I also promised a special biotech report, and that's what this is. I might just show a glimpse of the Dow just for the hell of it. But uh, basically, we're going to be talking about Novavax, Geron, Oncosec Medical, cell sci and actinium pharmaceuticals so uh as always my usual disclaimer do your own due diligence my opinions and my own do not constitute investment advice consult with an investment advisor before following any of my ideas um sometimes my ideas are pretty good i must admit i should follow them myself just kidding all right so let's take a look at the charts Oh, one other thing, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Give me a like, a comment, um, I don't know, share the link. Little things like that are helpful to me. Okay, uh, let's share screen. Speaking of sharing. You know, we'll leave the Dow for last because I know you're anxious for me to get right into the biotechnology stocks. Novavax was a special request by Ben, and I know Adam follows it and somebody else. I don't own Novavax, but maybe I should. Uh, last I looked at it, I think it was in the process of making lower highs and lower lows, which seemed to have ended right here with, with a double bottom on, uh, what date is that? 26th of November. That's not too far from, yeah, 11.20 rather. Okay, 11.20. Yeah, I knew it didn't, it didn't end Monday, right. Okay, 11.20 was a double bottom, uh, but not, but one penny more than the close on 11.14. So technically it's a higher low. And now we're in the process of making a higher high. When we take out uh, the high on 11.2 of $1.90. And I don't know what the heck is gonna stop it from doing that. Look at that big green candle. Maybe it'll be some profit taking, but it's going to take out that high while it's awaiting data on its, uh, I don't know, whatever the RSQVRF vaccine is for baby, it's a baby virus, and it's also an old people virus, and they're gonna, they wanna immunize, immunize all pregnant women so that they can, their babies will have immunity, and I don't know, they're gonna have a good time giving everyone that needle, I'm gonna run for the hills when I see the needle coming. Uh, they're also working on a universal flu vaccine. I, I don't think it'll have to be modified year by year, like the ones we have now that pretty much don't work. Maybe this one will actually work. Um, okay, so anyway, um, the chart now looks a hell of a lot better than the last time I looked at it. We have a solid bottom at a dollar sixty, I think it is, dollar sixty-two, something like that, and we have a solid uh, top. Unfortunately, that we got to get through at um, what is it, two dollars? So we have a, a big trading range. Uh, let me just check this high. Uh, 204. So we have a pretty big trading range from $1.62 to 204. 40 cents. That's pretty, pretty wide trading range. We've been in this trading range now for some time since 
uh, September the 24th. So that's uh, October, November, a couple of months. And it looks like we're gonna try really hard to break this trading range and challenge the all time, not the all time high, but the recent high, uh, there's another double top at um, on uh, October 5th of 217 triple top actually. So we've got a lot of uh, resistance ahead, first at 204 and then at 218. So let's see how strong Novavax is, whether it can go through both of those levels of, of resi resistance. Uh, if, if there's a lot of optimism regarding the expected data readout, then I suppose it will take out both levels of resistance. It may not be that easy, it may bounce a couple of times and before it goes through this one. And it may find the double, triple top here might be pretty strong resistance as well. I will just have to wait and see. Have a feeling with this law, big long candle today that we'll get there. I shouldn't say we because I don't own any. But I, th I think the owners of Novavax stock should feel pretty good today. Actinium Pharmaceuticals. I do own a ton of that. I didn't sell any on the way down, and I'm not going to sell any on the way up. And it looks like we're on the way up. We started a new upper trend line. And now we're back down. We're back along the long downward trend line. We, within a couple of days, I suspect by 12-3, uh, which is Monday, we will break out of this little um, little range, little uh, boundary that we're forming here, the apex of a triangle, if you will. You can think of it this way. So it's got to break out. It's either going to break to the top, follow this trend line, or break to the bottom, follow this trend line. I'm banking on it following the upper trend line. Uh, not just because I wanted to, but it shows an indication from the recent six days of trading that that's the direction it wants to go. So go, go, go. You're gonna be, you're, I'm gonna be a fan, a fan of actinium once again. I wanna see it take out this resistance line at, um, where is it, 53 cents, I think it is. So it shouldn't have too much trouble doing that. I don't think that's big resistance. But the 60 cent level is, so I think we're gonna bang heads with 60 cents in the near future, that Fractinium Pharmaceuticals. What's really amazing is that Oppenheimer, a conservative, uh, a co company, Oppenheimer Funds analyst is maintaining a $5 target through dilution and everything. That's kind of like saying, if we dilute 50%, then we're gonna really make that a $10 target. I mean, we're, we're printing shares with it. Actinium has been diluting and that's hurting the price of the stock, but Despite it all, the IOMAB B data that's expected is expected to be very, very good, I suppose. So um, I don't know. I haven't really been following the fundamentals that carefully because I have many, many stocks that I'm involved with. And lately, my attention has been more on the FANG stocks, which I've been trading. I haven't been actively trading uh, the biotechs but I am a long-term investor in Actinium. Uh, not crazy about the management, but I think it has a terrific shot at being a successful company, nonetheless, because of the science. So um, let's see what happens with Actinium. I think it's going to break through this way. I was right on my call on Netscape, which had a similar picture yesterday. So let's hope. Oncosec Medical, I have a large position in this as well, and I, I wish I didn't. 
just like actinium at this point. I'm behind the eight ball on both. Um, okay, it was in a zoom zoom channel, but it now it, it it collapsed on data that was less than what was expected. I thought the data was phenomenal, but you know I'm not a I'm not a biotech analyst. I still would argue that it was phenomenal data, uh, extending the number of people who would be benefit from Keytruda drastically. So I thought even though it was a small sample size, I don't know what more was expected. Um, so there'll be a further data readout. I don't know when, a few months probably, maybe beginning of the year. And I think that breaks through at that point. but. What's holding it back right now and into this narrow trading range, a dollar is a very tough nut to crack here. Uh, and then 77 cents on the downside is also pretty firm. So I think we're in a very tight trading range until the next data. Uh, working against us is printing of money. They're at the, they're at the market, they're buying it, not buying, they're selling at the market. So every time there's a little pop, I just visualize the company selling shares to people like me. No, uh, not me though, because I quit buying at this point. All right, at this point, I'm even tempted to take a little off the table and move it into something with a little more uh, early pop. Probably, I don't have to wait till January. Opportunity cost. Also, to, a very bad sign on Oncosec was that it was down 9% uh, today on one of the biggest updates of the year. I think it was the only red, red in my portfolio, practically, uh, pretty much. So that's not a good sign. So, uh, should you know, if you want to take a little off the table like me, you could do so, but I still think it's a good long-term play. Sharon, an old uh, an oldie and not a goodie, not for Dr. J anyway. But I was impressed today by Dr. John Scarlett's uh, investor conference. He did a great job at Pipe and Jaffrey. I read every word of the transcript of the presentation. And it sounds like he, a CEO who now believes in, in, his, in my metal stat. I, I know he was shaken by the, the decision to walk, but his last couple of uh, conferences, not conferences, investor, uh, investor briefings have been awful. So this was a pleasure that he was more enthusiastic uh, hinting at long-term survival rates for MF, um, hinting strongly that MDS looked very good upon careful study of the data. So Geron may very eventually pan out. If, the, if those that are holding, holding the bag like me hold the bag long enough, we might not be holding the bag at all. Geron does have that kind of potential to easily zoom past where it was when we were before be getting the boot from j and j so uh, the problem is it's been in a very narrow trading range even with the excellent presentation today it only went up four and a half four and a three quarter percent seven cents to 155 uh two dollars is the absolute uh high that it's made but it's Trading more like, uh, more like, let's say, uh, 172 on the high side, and 47. No, and uh, 100, 147. I think it was on the downside. So 147 to one. Uh, I'm getting my numbers jumbled up here. 171, let's say, to um, 143, something like that. It's a narrow trading range, and it's not a good one. To, it doesn't feel comfortable. Can you add here? By all means, I think it's safe to add. 
Will you get rich? Maybe in the long run. For those who are patient enough. Um, do you risk a breakout if you sell some and buy back later at a later date? Probably not. Uh, I like Geron long term. I'm not crazy about it short term. CVM, Celsi, waiting on data that should occur in the first quarter of 19. And I think I think it looks very, uh, very good to chart now with today's break of the downward trend line. I'd like to see a clean break tomorrow, a little follow through. It was up 4% to 328. I think the uh, first uh, level of resistance will be up around three, let's call it 360, and then 390. And that would be a tough one to crack, perhaps. I think 360, it should get through. So 360 would be my first uh, stop, so to speak. 390, my second stop. I think uh, sell side uh, should run up before the data readout. I think it'll probably go back to the 450 level uh, before data, and it'll be a binary event, good data, it'll go to 9, 11, 12, somewhere like that. Bad data, I don't wanna say. I've been burned before, I'll be, and that's what could happen again. But right now it's a fun ride. I think it, those who get, get on the train could make a nice run all the way up to 390. Even 390 is a nice run, let alone 450. Okay, so that's the summary of five of my favorite biotechs, so at least four of them. Novavax is not one of my favorites, but it's one of Ben's favorites. Maybe I'll buy some, Ben. Uh, Dow Jones, this was a good call of mine, my part the other day. I called uh, this low right here as the end of uh, wave two down, which is very close to where wave one up started. It was a deep retracement, probably 95% just by lo uh, looking it over. And then I said that uh, we will have a, a wave three super wave going up that will easily take out first the high of 11.8 and then the all time high of the Dow of 10.3, which was 26.789. And my prediction today, and I think yesterday, was that it will proceed to go to 30,000 on the Dow. So I'm very optimistic for the markets in general, the Dow in particular. The biotechs are going to do great. You can probably throw a dot at any bi at, at 10 biotechs, buy them all and collect money by the end of uh, January, February. I think all the biotechs have been beaten down way too much and there's gonna be a super duper rally in biotechnology. I've been talking about this super duper rally now for about a month and it hasn't happened yet, but I, I think it's time for biotech to launch. So with that, I will sit back in my chair and wait for the camera to come on so that I can say, bid you a, an appropriate farewell so I can say good night, I can say sayonara, I could say bye, I could say uh, tutelu, I could say hasta la vista, I can say ciao. Good night everybody from Long Island, New York. Don't forget to subscribe.